Hey up everybody, I'm going to move on to the next part of my micro lathe that, that I'm building. Uh, there's just a few more odds and ends to tie up really, but uh, will, it, will it ever be finished? I don't know, because I'm going to make some uh, different kinds of accessories for it in the future. So, I don't, think, I don't think it will ever be finished, it'll just keep evolving I think. But, there's just one or two jobs to finish off. Um, to get it how, how I initially wanted it to be. So in this part then I want to put a, a hand wheel on the lead screw. Similar to what you get on a Myford. Uh, with 125 divisions on the graduations to match up with this 8 teeth per inch lead screw. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than I thought it was going to be this because I'm limited for space and I'll explain why when I, when I bring you over here. I was hoping to just to put a dial on and leave it on but if I do that I won't be able to take my tail stock off if I ever need to not without dismantling everything so the lead screw is is really close to the actual lathe bed um, well due, due to its size really so what I've done then I've, I've extended the lead screw I should have thought of that initially when I made it, but that's when my lead screw actually finished before. So I've just made another piece of steel up, same diameter, screwed it into the existing lead screw to extend it. Put these two flats on for two reasons. One, to get a spanner on so I can tighten that into the lead screw. And then the other reason is so I can get a handle on with a dial where I can just take it on and off with a thumb screw uh, that will clamp to them flats. I've just made a bit of a sketch up, I'll show it you. This is the extension piece I've put on my lead screw that I've just shown you with two flats on and it just screws into the lead screw and I've uh, that stays on, that doesn't have to come off. So once that's on then I'm going to make this handle here uh, have a nail finish like I've put on my, on my saddle handle to match that. Uh, then this will be bored out to fit over this piece that I've put, already put onto the lead screw with the two flats and then two thumb screws to clamp it on to the lead screw. Then I'll have to make a dial which is this dotted line here that slides onto this handle that can rotate you know to, to zero it etc and then that will be held on with a friction screw in a groove in the handle so that's my outline plan uh, sometimes things get changed as you go along I suppose so uh, let's uh, crack on with this Okay, let's have a little bit of an update here. I've got uh, I've got the actual uh, handle made with a grub screw in to hold it onto the uh, lead screw. 
I've got to make the graduation ring now. So I've had a scout round all my lathe uh, gearing to see if I could find anything with 125 teeth on to use that as a indexer. I've got nothing. So the only thing that I'm left with is um, the actual dial on my Myford lathe. I'll have to take that off and uh, somehow set it up with an indicator on it so I can uh, mark 125 divisions accurately. Hundred and twenty five divisions. I'll set this up somehow with my actual uh, graduation ring and uh, set some sort of indicator up. Right then, I've got my uh, Myford hand wheel set up on a mandrel into my dividing head. I've got my scriber clamped to my milling table with a scriber pointer pointing to the dip the graduations. I've got my workpiece set up and machined up to its diameter, my scriber in my chuck and I'll put my scriber once I've touched on probably about five thou deep to give me a scribed line. So obviously the lines are different lengths as you go along. Every tenth division I'm going to make that three sixteenths long then in between them 10 divisions is the 5th division, I'll make that 1 eighth long and then every other division in between those, I'll make those 3 30 seconds long and once I've got all my scribe lines on, I've got some uh, 3 30 second number punches here I've got all my 125 divisions on and my settings back to zero now so I'm ready to put my numbers onto the uh, onto the dial. So I may not have mentioned this before, I've not actually bored this ring out yet to slide onto the uh, handle. I wanted to leave that solid while I do the stamping or it is to probably make it uh, oval. If you've not if you've not seen this in my previous video, uh, you'll have to take a look back at my setup for stamping. I've got this clamped onto me fixed point of me uh, milling head with this fixture, and then all I do is put me put me stamps in here, and then stamp them. And then if I'm doing uh, a line of stamping, I'll use my X and Y axis to get my lines and my spacings but because I'm not doing a a row I'm doing a circle I'll be using my dividing head to rotate me round to each appropriate point on the circumference 
I'll put a link up somewhere up here if you've not seen this uh, little jig I made for stamping and you can have, have a more detailed look at that I've made this 6BA plastic screw. I've just got to cut it to length and put a screwdriver slot in it. And what that is for is to act as a friction screw to screw into the dial, which will then go into that groove. Well that's it then I think jobs are good and <clears throat> I've just got to put an indicator onto this bracket uh, somewhere in that direction. Well I think that's it for this part then I've just got to put that, that pointer or indicator on uh, to point to the dial and then that will be completed. So uh, I'll sign off for now then if you found that useful, interesting etc etc give me a thumbs up and a subscribe I'd appreciate that. And I'll catch you on the next part of this then. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.